If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold And when you get there, there's a hand to hold When your day's down here or through There's a place up there for people like you If you walk around with your heart on your sleeve And if you're trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love so someone could be saved a place for people like you. I've heard up there the streets are made of gold. And when you get there, there's a hand to hold. I believe when your day's down here or through, there's a place up there for people like you Stay 
As the song says, God sees what we don't. He sees the end from the beginning, the beginning from the end. And like we like to say, nothing surprises God. So God knew that we were going to be here right now, today. And I know that... In all his glory and his wisdom, he will give you, the family, the strength that you need to go through. My name is Deborah Polius, and I'm going to be your chairperson for this afternoon. On behalf of the pastor and members of the Goodlands Full Gospel Worship Center, I'd like to welcome each and every one of you here to the service 
for Leslie. He was a young life, a young person. But we know that God knows best. And what we don't understand now, we will understand in the future. So welcome and on behalf of the church, we want to convey our condolences to Leslie's family. We will have Rochelle at this time who is going to come to open us in prayer. Rochelle, Tanika Edwin will come. Kingdom of heaven. And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except he be converted and become as little children, he shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Thank you very much, Tanika. And at this time, I invite you to stand as we do our congregational songs. And you will see here, Amazing Grace. However, that is apparently not the song that was intended. So we'll do the other version of Amazing Grace. And we invite those of you who know it to please join us. Shall we stand? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. But now I see T'was grace that taught my heart to fear And grace my fears relieved How precious did that grace Chains of God, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, this mercy reigns. An end in love.
song you are my strength strength like no other you are my strength strength like no other strength like no other reaches to me you are my strength you, you are my Strength like no other. 
your seat. And as the song says, he's our strength like no other. And when you really, really need a person, God alone can be the strength that will carry you through. And so we move on to our special tributes. And first on our list, we have, I believe, the name is Zaid Senville. Is Zaid there? It's coming.
have much to bring my heart is torn in pieces it's my offering Hallelujah. He did well. Amen. Put your hands together for him one more time. Very courageous young man. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. But he's bringing himself in support of his friend. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. At this time we want to call a toner horch who's going to do the eulogy. Good afternoon, everyone. This afternoon. I want to leave my footprints on the sand. This afternoon, I'm here to celebrate the life of my nephew. I'm here to celebrate the life of Leslie. I'm here to celebrate the life of Leslie. You know, it's funny. The day Leslie passed, I always call and always find out how he was doing. And he never had nothing sad to say. He would say, Auntie, I'm okay. But God knows what he was going through. He never complained. So this afternoon, I stand here with tears, but not tears of sadness, tears of joy knowing that my nephew is with his maker. So I would just like to you bring just a little brief Leslie Malvin Larimer Jr. also known as LJ or Papier. Leslie was born on the 21st of February 2013 to parents Cheryl Charles and Leslie Larimer. Through his life was short, lived here with us. He still made the biggest impact possible in many of our lives. Leslie was the youngest to attend Loving Hands Daycare and Preschool at age five months. Lebee Primary, which he spent a short time then. Then Bexon Infant and Primary. Being his young, jovial self, LJ knew how to make everyone smile, whether he was being sarcastic or not. 
He knew how to make his point across clearly. Leslie was happy to attend Bexon because his best friend, Rajon, was already enrolled there. Leslie was friendly and loved interacting with others, but still found time to play with his little cars and toy soldiers. He even liked climbing the guava tree with his friends. Some of our fondest memories with LJ are the times that he spent with Some of our fondest memories are the time that he spent with Kivel. LJ decided to shower himself with all of her hair grease. It was funny for him because he knew he was going to be back home. She had to bring him back home. Leslie had a great sense of humor. He loved to ask questions. And we never think twice to giving him the right answers. For instance, when Kivil was pregnant, no, first he asked, What's a virgin? And we let him know what's a virgin, because that's the type of child he was. He's always curious. When Kivel was pregnant, he said, So, Kivel, uh, so you're having sex now? He was able to say that because he knew what a virgin was, and she's pregnant. That is our LG. Though he was young, he had a fair understanding and know exactly what he wanted to accomplish in life. For example, if he wanted a new toy, his sister would say, well, then you have to give me good grades. And he will give her good grades because he wanted that toy. That's what he wanted. So he's going to work to accomplish that. If they wanted him to do something and said they're going to reward him and he's not interested, well, then he's just not doing it. That is our LJ. You know, I'm going to come out from the, the eulogy with everything that was written. LJ that played a significant part of many lives. Whether you're young and old, he knew just how to talk. He knew how to carry himself. LJ will, always, will, will say, he even told his mom, when I die, I don't want you to cry. So today, we're not crying because he's dead. Our tears are tears of just knowing that we are going to miss him, miss the sarcastic remarks. I know his sister Trifina. You're going to miss him. But, but he knows that you love him. He knows that we love him. And I want you to hold on, each and every one of us. His siblings, his parents, grandparents, friends. Leslie made such an impact in people's life, even when he went over to Martinique. You know, even the doctors and nurses, they were so amazed at how he would carry himself. 
He never gave them a hard time. He never complained. And many times I ask, I, I said to myself, who am I to complain at life? When my nephew is dear, not well, and he's still not complaining. And that was Leslie. He was strong. He never wanted to cry because he never wanted to see his mother cry. Even in his pain, he still think of others. He think about his mom, who he loved, and I know you love him. His father, who was always there by his side. He loved you guys. We all love him, and I want each and every one of us to hold on to the memories that we have made with him. The good, the bad, but the Lord give it, and the Lord take it. And he is in a better place. He is with our Heavenly Father, and we know he is well taken care of. Thank you. Thank you so very much. It is always a difficult thing losing a loved one, but when it comes down to losing a child, it makes it that much harder. And so again, I pray that God strengthens the family as they go through this time. And Diane Howell will come at this time to do a poem. Afternoon. Leslie, a friend. A friend like you, I can't ever forget. Not even the day we met. Or the times we'd have our silly little bets. It hurts right now that you've left us behind. But now that you'll always be in this heart of mine. Thinking back on times we've had, core memories that will always be in my head. It brings me great ease knowing that you're now resting in peace. Sleep on there, friend, for your battle has come to an end. But now that you'll always be in our hearts until the end of time. Love always. Thank you, Diane. Amen. And at this time, we have a tribute by the Beckson Primary School. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, everybody. I am here in the capacity of principal of the Bexar Primary School. Before I begin, let me extend sincere condolences to Leslie's mother, father, extended family. Leslie Lorimer began his primary education at the Bexon Primary School in September of 2021. He was a grade three student at the time and he was in the care of his teacher, Mrs. Sharon Alfred. We all remember Leslie as a bubbly young boy who was always smiling. He was very kind and constantly showed love to his fellow classmates. 
He was a darling. And he always tried to see the beauty in everything he laid his hands on. Leslie was self-motivated. And I remember during the peak of the COVID period, even in Leslie, Leslie's illness, he did find his way into the Google Classroom. That's to show you how motivated he was when it came to doing his schoolwork. Leslie was also a very respectful student. He completed every task with pride. And he always tried his best to please his teacher. It was an absolute joy to teach Leslie. As I scrolled back to Mrs. Alfred's WhatsApp messages, it was on December 12th, 2021. She wrote, and I quote, Good night, miss. One of my students has been hospitalized from yesterday. His mom told me he had the flu, but the situation had become worse and he had to be taken in. A few minutes later in the text, Mrs. Alfred told me that it was Leslie Lorimer. Then two days later, on December 14, 2021, his teacher reported from his sister that Leslie would not be returning to school in January of 2022. We prayed for Leslie continuously at school assemblies. And there were times when the Bexor Infant School and the Bexor Primary School would have church service every term. So we prayed at those church services for Leslie. We also prayed individually. I contacted the District 4 Education Officer, Mrs. Marie George Allen, and informed her about Leslie, and she also contacted her sister. Leslie was our child, not just our student, but our child. I also contacted this lady by the name of Crispina Watson in Canada, and I told her about Leslie. And she was ever so willing to assist. We all wanted Leslie to be back in his rightful seat in his grade three classroom at the time. And also in grade four. We missed Leslie for the whole calendar year of 2022. And now we are here. Leslie will be missed by his classmates, Isabella St. Hill, Ayanna Claxton, Ella Alcindo, Gian Remy, Genesis Hines, Nadia Duplessis, Nikia Louis, Diane Howell, Miller Mongru. And also by the boys he used to run around the schoolyard with. Dante Alexis, Maz John, Adam John, Kaelan Alcid, Albert Joseph, Quintus John, Janari Joseph, Liam John, Wendell Lionel. Also by the principal, teachers, janitor, cook of the Bexo Primary School, and by extension, District 4 Education Office. Before I end, I need to say that Hen uh, Leslie's mom is a very strong woman. Can we all give this lady a round of applause for me, please? Even in Leslie's illness, I learned a lot from her. She's a prayerful woman. She believes in God. And I thank her so much for strengthening me even in her time 
of grief. Our heartfelt condolences to Leslie's family, friends, and community members. May Leslie rest peacefully with the angels in heaven. Thank you. I was sitting hard waiting to hear the girls do something. <laughs> Amen. At this time, I want to invite Pastor Francis Polius is going to come to do the sermonette. So please sit back and relax for a little while as he comes to give us a few minutes. Pleasant good afternoon to each and everyone who is here today. I was kind of surprised that there were so many of you who came to support this young boy and his family. I believe that's a very good gesture. Normally, you find churches are full when it's somebody in some kind of name or something in society. So it's good that so many of you all came to support the family of this young man today. Amen. I just want to speak to you for just a short while. Um, normally, because of what we do as ministers of the gospel, we always are given the task of doing such services which we would prefer to have been otherwise. Fortunately, or I, when I came and I looked at the photo of the young man who passed, I vividly remembered dedicating him. Nice little chubby young boy with a smile on his face. He would, who would have thought he would have gone so soon? But that is the tragedy of life. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, I want to just read a verse and a half and just share briefly with you from that perspective. It says, to everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And immediately in the next verse, it says, a time to be born and the next thing is a time to die. No one who is born knows how much time will be afforded to them on the earth. Life is the most precious gift and death is human's worst enemy. Unfortunately, in this time we are living, Humans are helping humans' worst enemy by taking human lives themselves. We are presently living in a time you cannot even keep up with who died. Because every time you hear the news, somebody kills somebody. Thank God that this young man, although it's unfortunate that he would pass at such a young age, but I thank God that he's not here because somebody took his life through violence, but he died of natural causes. I listened to the tributes and the comments that was made about him. And it tells me that we all can make a difference. We all can make a change with whatever time has been given or allotted to us on the earth. Today we have a body lying in this box right in front of us. But there is more than a body in there. In there is possibilities that will never 
be known or be realized. Because the person who carried those possibilities, like the song says, gone too soon. In this box, ideas have gone, opportunities have gone, wishes have died with him, expectations have also died with him. I look at the back of the leaflet and I realize he is dressed up like a policeman. So he might well have grown up to be a policeman. He might well have grown up to be a lawyer, a politician. You do not know what opportunities have gone with him passing so soon. So I am with the rest of the members of this church. We sincerely sympathize with the parents of this young man. When one is born, we are joyful, we celebrate, but when they die, we are sorrowful. But from what I heard about him, I'm not too surprised because at his dedication, he seems to have had that face to say, here I come well, to challenge everything that is placed before me. So to those of us who are here today, who have lived beyond his years, and those who are much younger, I pray God, since none of us know what day will be our last. For I think the song said, there are six million ways to die. When you leave your home in the morning, there is no guarantee you will return. When you go to bed, there is no guarantee you will wake up. And by the looks of it, him passing away in a foreign country. It tells me that his parents made every effort to keep him alive. But like somebody said earlier, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Jesus spent 33 years on the earth and fulfilled his course in life. So do all of us have an opportunity, no matter how long or how short we live, to impact our world. I pray that the passing of Leslie at such a young age, if I could only have read his mind, because you see, the body is dead, but the mind is alive. The spirit is alive. And his thoughts are alive. If we could have read his thoughts, I wonder what he would have been saying to those of us who are still in the land of the living. Just by looking at this casket here, it tells you that I'm here in the land of the living to appreciate the fact that you are alive. And when you live this life and you are spoken about, try to live a life that people will have something good to say about you also. No one can bring him back into this life. But to those who know God or those who believe in God, the Bible says those who believe in him do not die but they just transition to a better life, a life of no end. Therefore, may I advise us all to seek to live a life that is fulfilling, satisfying, peaceful, joyful, and contented. 
It's a waste of your time to go hating people. It's a waste of your time to go doing evil and all the wickedness you can imagine. It's a waste of your time to go abusing people and taking advantage of them. For one of these days, you too will die. And death signifies a judgment day. Therefore, in the same manner, we do good, good comes back to us. And if you do evil, evil will also come back to you. It is funny in closing how that even he being sick was able to comfort his own parents and he seems to have no fear of death. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27, it is appointed unto every man wants to die but after this comes judgment I pray God we live a life that is right a life that is good a life that is fulfilling a life that is productive and like the principle said work hard that you may accomplish your goals laziness doesn't pay being lackadaisical would not pay today you are here, tomorrow is not yours, neither is it guaranteed. So today, on behalf of Leslie, I believe if this coffin would have opened for a few minutes and would have opened his eyes and his mouth to just say a few words and close them back, he would have said to us all, Live life to your fullest potential and live the best life you can. Try to wake up with a smile. Of course, there will be things to disappoint you. There will be things to anger you. There will be things to frustrate you. But that doesn't mean you have to react according to the emotions that you feel. I say to people every day, be emotionally intelligent. Let your actions speak, and let your words speak towards your actions, and let them all speak towards good. On behalf of yourself, your family, your friends, and your acquaintances. So with that, we want to say farewell and Godspeed to Leslie, because right now, it's only his body that is dead. The spirit is as alive as could be. So even whilst you are mourning, I really want to believe with all my heart that this young man is in a better place. I do not have the power to determine where he is. Only God has that privilege and that power. But I just wish with all my heart that he is honestly in a better place, never having the opportunity to really experience the fullness and the joys of life. As preachers, we delicate people. We baptize some. We marry some. And others, we bury. I pray God that this young man, his time came soon. But I pray to, to God Almighty, those who are here today, who are still in the land of the living, make the most of your time here. Being on earth is like a vacation. And once you go on vacation, the day comes when you have to go back home. Being born, you were born into a vacation. Make the most of your vacation. God really and truly bless your soul today. May we all stand before I call you to sign the registers. Could the family just come? I really just want to pray with you. And for those who really loved him and knew him, because I know his face and his memories will linger with you for a very, very long time. Father, this day, Thou art the only one who has the ability to comfort that parent, 
that family, that brother, that sister, and the acquaintances of Leslie at this time. For the emotional pain, the psychological pain, the pain of memories and thoughts and opportunities that may, they may have never enjoyed with him will remain with them for a very long time. But I pray that thou will comfort them, thou will keep them, thou will strengthen them in this time of loss. I pray, Lord God Almighty, for even the students and the teachers and the principal who was given the privilege and the opportunity to partake in his life, they too will be comforted knowing that he has gone to a better place. I pray your blessings of grace, mercy, and strength at this time on behalf of each and every one. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated as I will move towards the signing and my wife will take care of the rest of. Thank you. At this time, we invite the witnesses to join pastor at the table. And that is Leslie Lorima, Cheville Charles, Trifena, Mark, and Monica Shalry. Please meet pastor at the table as Colin Richards will come. You are the wind 
Did I ever tell you that you are my hero? There's a song that says, If tomorrow never comes, will she know how much I love her? You want to sing this song with me, those of you who know it? Let's do it. If tomorrow never comes, I loved her. Did I try in every way to show her every day that she's my only one? And if my time on earth was proved, she must face this world without me. It's the love I gave her in the past Gonna be enough to last If tomorrow never comes Amen. There's no tomorrow in our life now for Leslie. But after hearing everything that I've heard, I know that he made his love for each and every one of you known. Every waking moment, he let you know how much he loved you. He probably didn't say it in words, but I know he certainly let you know how much he loved you indeed. Amen. And we're moving on. And we ask um, Sasha to come at this time. I believe Zaid is unable to do his other tribute. And so Sasha Marius will come to do the vote of oh, thanks. Good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of our family, I would just like to say thank you to everyone who is here today. Um, thank you to everyone who have contributed to LJ's life while he was alive. And to all those who prayed for us, who contributed, whether it was financially, physically I would just like to say thank you to those who we did not who we don't call by name we still want to say we still want you to know how much we appreciate you for all that you have done in LJ's life, the impact you've made in his life, for the, all the nurses in Martinique, you know, for the short space of time that he was there, they were so great with him. And we just want to say thank you to the nurses, the doctors, everyone that played a part in making this going away ceremony possible for him. We thank you, we love you, and we appreciate it all. Amen. Thank you very much, Sasha, for your vote of thanks. And so at this time, we want to invite the pallbearers to come as we get ready to make our way out. And as we do our recessional, we hear the instrumental in the arms of the angel. Pallbearers, please come.
remember to take all of your belongings and do not clog the front.
For as much as it has, it has pleased the Almighty, in His wise providence, to take out of this world the soul of our deceased brother and son, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection unto eternal life. To our Lord Jesus Christ. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, save the Lord. We commend his body to the ground. May the angels of the Lord guide your soul to an eternal rest. Bye, Papa. Bye.
fruit. I saw which I'm going to take it on the fruit.